Salomo Soginverse. The past week was quite action packed in Italy. We had a Coppa Italia round that actually delivered quite a few upsets, despite the Coppa Italia not being the friendliest competition for small teams. And yes, the big teams still have to play. At least Napoli were in there as well. We had, of course, the makeup game where Como got the first win. We had in Serie A 33 goals scored in 10 games. However, the old order sort of has been re established. Torino lost, Empoli didn't get a win. And so we have Napoli, Juve, Milan and Inter in the top four, which looks a whole lot more like a normal Serie A season. I was very happy to see Milan get off early to a relatively easy win. Although it has to be said, before the goal was scored, Lecce were a little bit better in the game. Then I think, yeah, you did it the right way. You got the game out of the way in the first half, then you could cruise in the second half to prepare for the important game at Leverkusen. And yes, definitely the Champions League scheduling played a role in the way that the fixture list was made because we had all the big teams playing relatively early, except for Napoli, who, remember, do not play in Europe this season. And therefore, honestly, I would think we should consider them as one of the contenders because Conte, with a week to prepare every week, Watch out for Napoli, despite their bad start, they have not lost since. As always, I'm gonna give you now a review of the entire week. We start in the Coppa Italia, then we go to Serie A. These are longer edits of my short videos that I've been posting on Serie A. And I will see you on the other side. The Coppa Italia might be the competition that is most geared towards the top teams, but we had a few upsets this time. We had the league leaders Torino taking out the fifth in the table, Empoli, and it ends with a minor upset. Empoli going to Torino, beating him 2-1. While this might not have been a true upset, we had one in the Derby della Lanterna. Sampdoria actually beat Genoa on penalties. Miretti misses the first one for Genoa, however Benedetti sees the third one for Sampdoria, saved as well. So after five tries each, we are at 4-4. It goes on on the seventh try. Zanoli misses for Genoa and then Barreca converts for Sampdoria for a famous cup win. In other cup results, we had Sassuolo beating Lecce away from home. We had Cagliari beating Cremonese only by 1 0. Then we had Cesena going to Pisa and winning 1 0. We had Udinese at home against Salernitana, a 3 1 win, relatively easy. We had also Monza against Brescia, 3 1 at home. And then Napoli took on Palermo, win easy for a resounding 5 0 win for. Napoli. Quickly in between regarding the Coppa Italia, we already know the fixtures for this next round and I have them here in the order that the tree actually pans out, which I think is important. We do not have the dates yet because it has to be all scheduled around Champions League and so on, you know. And since both Milan teams are playing at home, one has to play sooner than the other. But what should become blatantly obvious is not only that, again, the Coppa Italia is very much skewed towards the favorites, but also that the upper half of the draw is ridiculously easy. This is made for you with to cruise into a final again. I mean, whoever comes out of Fiorentina Empoli will probably lose to Juve. Bologna, Atalanta, I don't think they can take on Juve, but maybe one of them will get on the roll. Whereas on the bottom part, we have all the big teams. Milan plays a solo. <laughs> For one season, I didn't want to play a solo. So solo at home is always a fixture that Milan tend to lose. Roma taking on Sampdoria. Then Lazio Napoli, that's the big fixture. Who played in the winner of Inter against Udine. You see where this is going. We have two Milan versus Rome for the finals and then probably a derby, whether it's Milan or whether it's Rome, most likely Milan in the semifinals. So yeah, you were in the final against a Milanese or Roman team. I also owe you a surprise result from the past Tuesday to finish out the previous Serie A round. Como win at Atalanta 3-2 and it was a really, really weird game. First of it has been postponed due to the waterlock pitch on Monday. Then Zapacosta give Atalanta a logical lead in the first half. But the right of the half, Serefeza pulls one back in the 46th minute. And then a right range shot is deflected by Kolasinac into its own net in the 54th. And just four minutes later, Fadera makes it 3-1 for Como. Game was settled at that point. Como really hold on to the first win despite the Lukman penalty, cutting Atalanta's deficit in half. Milan started off my weekend quite well with a 3-0 win over Lecce and I was very worried that after the win in the derby Milan th will think that this will be an easy game and they can win it in second gear and for most of the first half it actually looked that way. I would argue the better chances fell to Lecce. Lecce was a little bit better in the game but overall the game was not that good and just at the moment that I was about to tune out Milan scored three goals in five minutes. It was really crazy. It started with a free kick from the side from Theo Hernandez that Morata had 
minutes in, then just two minutes later, Leo plays it over to Hernandez, who again from a very acute angle slams it into the net. And then it should have been Abraham who scored the goal, who hits the post and another chance, but in the end the ball falls to Pulisic, who makes it then. 3-0 at the half and that more or less settled the game. There was not much more happening in the second half. There were a few changes. You know, you brought on Musa, Chukwese, on Jovic to maybe give them some experience. Maybe they get some goals. They didn't really make much of a difference. The most notable thing is that Bartesagi, who had come on for Thierry Hernandez, got sent off with a red card that honestly was a little bit harsh, if you were to ask me. Any case, it's a win that confirms the win of the derby and Milan can now look positively towards the Champions League match in Leverkusen. Last week we said how unusual the Serie A table looks. Well, a week later it looks a whole lot more ordinary. We had, for instance, Inter going to Udinese and getting a 3-2 win at a tough ground. Lautaro Martinez back on a score sheet with a brace. Juventus also got a win, still have not conceded goals and the only two results they can produce this season in Serie A is either a 0-0 or a 3-0 win. They got the 3-0 win, Vlahovic scoring also a brace and Concesao adding a third goal goal surely helped that the game was played in front of an empty stadium. In the evening, two more Champions League teams played against each other. Bologna against Atalanta. Bologna took a lead through Castro just at the start of the second half. However, then had Lukumi sent off with a straight red card, which allowed Atalanta back into the game. In the end, it's Sarmacic who gets a very late equalizer for Atalanta. League leaders Torino, after being ousted in the Coppa Italia, took on Lazio, another home game for them, and lost 3-2 at home. Lazio, very much the better team, scoring through Guendouze and Bulletia. 2-0 in the 60th minute. However, Shea Adams pulls one back. Torino is in the game. Noslin settles the game in the 89th minute before we had a great goal by Coco to give us the final 2-3 scoreline. Obviously, Como have arrived after getting their big win at Atalanta. They also beat Hellas Verona at home 3-2. Quite some goals in Serie A this weekend. Patrick Cutrone scoring two and also Andrea Pelotti being on the score sheet. I think Como is getting on a roll now. And it's the Romans that save Roma. Venezia were actually quite good in the first half. Poyan Palo scoring just before the halftime break. However, then Brian Cristante in 74th heads in an equalizer. And a few minutes later, young Roman-born Pisili after Paredes cross gets the winner. 2-1 for Roma. Meanwhile, Napoli, with no European commitments, can focus on the league and they get a workman-like 2-0 win against Monza, Politano and Quara scoring the two goals and they sit now top of the table. But I almost want to say I'm saving best for last. The Monday evening game, not many probably would have watched it, but that was a real cracker. We had Cagliari being the much better team in the first half, taking lead through Sortea after Yerimina goal had already been disallowed early on. And Dennis Mann equalizes, but very quickly Marin re-established a 2-1 lead for Cagliari that is then equalized by Anani penalty, but from the kickoff, Piccoli gets the winner in the 87th minute for Cagliari. Great game that was. So looking at the fixtures for the next round, the last round before the international break, so there's no Monday game. I mean, the standard game should be Fiorentina against Milan. This is the traditional game. However, Inter against Torino. Remember, Torino have been doing very well until this week. Maybe there is another upset in there. Cannot quite see it. Watch also out for Napoli against Como. Como have been good so far. Well, this ends my thoughts on Serie A for this week. Please let me know what you thought about this round. Let me know in the comments below. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Talk to you soon about more things in my Serie A universe. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.